Well, Biden's Department of Justice and the FBI are facing backlash tonight after a team of 20 agents allegedly descended on the home of a pro-life activist and a father of seven who was arrested at gunpoint in rural Pennsylvania. Quite the dramatic scene, I would say, and the family claims that their children were terrified and crying during the raid. It all goes back to a 2021 incident where the accused father, Mark Houck, claims he was protecting his son from a harassment by a Planned Parenthood worker outside of an abortion clinic. And while federal authorities did obtain a warrant under the Freedom of Access to Clinic Interest Act, local authorities have already dismissed a complaint related to the incident in court. And many are now wondering if the FBI went overboard and exhibited a clear double standard. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley tweeted this about the incident, saying, This is unconscionable. A Catholic man arrested at gunpoint in a SWAT-style raid for protesting at an abortion clinic. Meanwhile, not a single arrest for the firebombing of pregnancy care centers. This is a deeply corrupt Department of Justice. Holly went out and criticized the agency for turning a local dispute into a national case. And earlier today, Houck pleaded not guilty to the federal charges. Well, joining me now with reaction is former FBI agent Jonathan Gillum. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Always good to have you. All right, so the Philadelphia FBI, who uh, actually did the raid, they have come out with a statement saying this. They say, the number of personnel and vehicles widely reported as being on the scene is an overstatement. And the tactics used by the FBI personnel were professional and in line with standard practice and intend to ensure the safety of everyone present in and outside the residence. All right. In your experience with the FBI, is this normal practice business as usual or would this be considered unprecedented behavior? Well, uh, after reading uh, the, uh, the description of what actually occurred, um, and the fact that it was uh, turned down as a case by the local authorities, I think what we're looking at is, again, once again, uh, the DOJ, remember, because the DOJ is heavily involved with this, and uh, the FBI uh, supervisors falling in line with uh, what the DOJ wants to do, because I'm sure that this, uh, this, uh, this abortion clinic probably made the complaint to the federal authorities. And you have to remember that uh, the U.S. Attorney Jacqueline Romero is uh, the one who approves this to go forward, because what you have to realize about the FBI is they, they may want to investigate a crime, but it's the U.S. Attorney that's going to actually uh, take it forward and, and charge somebody. Um, otherwise, the, the, the case goes nowhere, because the FBI can arrest them, but what are they going to do with them if they can't charge them with a crime, right? If they can't take it to trial, it's not going to go anywhere. So I think when you look at this, it, um, I, it sounds like it, it, the the guy was trying to protect his child, and uh, the the person from the abortion clinic, um, can, you know, some somebody touched somebody, and the guy just said it was assault. Um, if, if anything, it was simple assault. He didn't actually prevent the guy from getting into the facility. The guy got into the facility, so um, I don't think it fell underneath the the federal law, but the reality is of how many people showed up, the way that they showed up, and the speed at which this went through the system, the fact that it actually got through the system, um, is that's what's surprising to me. Because I've had cases where w we knew something was, somebody was guilty of something, but it just didn't reach a threshold for the U.S. attorney to get involved because they just thought, you know, this is a minor crime. It's not anything that's going to uh, help their career or that is political enough for them to follow it. And so that's what I'm seeing. When yeah. I read between the lines, I'm seeing politics, politics, politics. I mean, that's just the thing, right? I mean, if this guy was a real threat to society, why wait a year? Why pull up a case that local courts have already rejected? Um, and why have at least 20 agents raid his home with his family? Just the process of it seems very odd. Some people have said this goes all the way back to Attorney General Merrick Garland. I mean, would something like this cross his desk? Well, if there, there could be standing uh, policies now about these types of cases, that they're going to go after these cases very quickly. You know, these whistleblowers and the way that they're talking about how things are being inflated uh, in the Bureau, like white supremacy or domestic uh, 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 terrorist cases, 
uh, things that actually don't exist in the way that the Bureau and the DOJ uh, tells the public that they exist, those are being pushed through the Bureau. So when we look at this uh, and, and the way that they approach this case, I mean, it's been that long. They could have just called the guy and had him come down. There's, there's no reason. There's no sign that the guy's going to flee. There's no sign of real violence. Uh, there, there was no sign of blood or a complete uh, mm. attack on someone. Um, they could have just had him yeah. come down. I do find what's interesting is how how they quickly said that it wasn't SWAT, and uh, and that's what they right. wanted to point out, that it wasn't SWAT. Wow. Jonathan Gillum, unfortunately, we're out of time. Hope to have you back soon. Thanks for being here. You got it. Thank you.